Welcome to WSOT TV City Talk. I'm your host, Angela Stepp, and alongside of me is the Mayor of Marion, Jess Allen Ball. And this show is all about you and the city of Marion, and we are going to be answering your questions that you have called in throughout the past month, and we are excited to get right into it. Everything we talk about has to do with the city of Marion. And Mayor, it's a joy to have you back on the show again. I know we had Chief Haley on the last time, so it's been just a little bit of, of time span there since we've had you here. So thanks for coming in today. Good to be here. Good to see you again. It's, it's a pleasure. You know, there's been a lot of exciting things that have happened since we last spoke. Um, everything from, well, you just gave the state of the city address right. and uh, you know also there's a neat thing about a rebranding of the city which I know we'll talk about here in a little bit and you know it's a short time frame that we have together so I think probably I should stop talking and jump right into the questions what do you think let's go all right let's do it all right well the very first question I had came in on our message line and so as we go about the show if you have a question that you would like for the mayor to answer you can give us a call it's a local number 765-536-WSOT you can also go to the show website which is ctmarion.com and you can submit your questions online there and if you don't want to call and leave a message you can always text that 536-WSOT as well so here is the first question. It's kind of a multi-part question. It reads, when I came to Marion, we had a zoo at the park and a busy downtown and all kinds of jobs. We had a good mall and a lot of things for families to do. Uh, and they referenced being able to go camping at the parks, that they had famous people come to perform. And now they, they don't see that anymore. In fact, they said what they're concerned about is that you see a lot of dying youth in the street with meth addictions and, and heroin and whatnot. Uh, and they're hoping that there's a way that we can bring Marion back to life. And they're hoping that maybe you can be the person to start that. And how would you like to address that? Well, first, appreciate the question. Uh, I would disagree that there's not a lot to do in Marion. Modern Park has been uh, coming up with more and more activities each year for citizens to take part in. Last year, Melinda Hussong and Doug Darga, and those who lead our parks department, came up with the idea of having a movie night. So last fall, they had a movie night out at Motor Park, and thank goodness the weather was perfect. We had, we had over 600 people attend that, and they had hot dogs and popcorn. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Really, really a big hit. They're going to continue to do that. I'll let Belinda come on sometime and talk about her activities that they're planning, mm -hmm. some new activities for the park. And these are, some are geared more towards family, some are geared more towards adults, but there's all kinds of activities going on in Marion. Uh, we're going to do a better job as city of letting people know on our city calendar of what different events are coming up in our community and keep people posted if they'll check out our website. As we develop that, you'll be able to go on there and actually see there are a number of things to do. We're not probably going to bring in your biggest names that are going to charge a fortune to come here. But we have lots of quality entertainers that put on shows here in Marion every yeah, year. You know, I'm thinking, uh, speaking of Modern Park, you know, we had concerts in the park, uh, multiple concerts all throughout the last uh, Very the well last attended, year, 2016, too. Very, very well, well attended. Great artists coming in, great shows. So if you weren't able to make it out to catch those, I recommend that you keep an eye on the calendar this year. Make sure you find your way out to the park for one of those concerts. Uh, also, uh, there was a, a, an art exhibit that happened in the park. I was at that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's also the gardening, uh, the gardens beautiful, club. And, oh, beautiful. my gracious. Modern the gardens beautiful. at Matter Park are perfect. The gardens are exceptionally beautiful. Yes. And we have people that are on waiting lists to be able to get in there. So, you know, that is something that I, I have to praise the city for having such a beautiful um, redeveloped park system, if you will. Uh, another thing, though, um, I, I would like to, to talk about is, uh, I mentioned it just a little bit ago, and that's the city rebranding. Uh, can you share with us a little bit about the rebranding efforts that the city has gone through? Well, when I became mayor, I looked at how we do uh, we do our slogans and a new look for Marion every time we have a new mayor elected. And that sounds fine, but there's a cost to that. Every time we change leadership at the mayor's office, there's a cost that gets transferred to the taxpayers because all of a sudden well, these slogans start showing up on everything in the city. And then the new mayor comes in and says, well, I'm not sure I like that. Why don't we change it? So I decided I'd pursue Indiana Wesleyan and Layla Price, who is the director of community development and marketing, worked closely with them. But I thought, you know, 
Indiana Wesleyan students and faculty might be a good source to help us do this at no cost. Mm -hmm. Will they come in and be a partner to us without charging us? It would mm -hmm. be a learning experience for their students. Mm -hmm. And we could get professional type service without the cost, without any money. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to come up with a brand. A brand is different than a logo in yes. some ways. The brand is, I'll give you this, Nike. If you're not a sports person, but you've probably seen Nike sports apparel in Kohl's or any other store you go to here in town, Dunham's, you name it. Nike has a swoosh, just a simple swoosh. That's their mark. Mm -hmm. When you see it, you don't even need to see the word Nike. Mm -hmm. We know that's Nike without even seeing the word. Mm -hmm. I found out that the founder of Nike didn't even like that. Phil Knight didn't like it. A student at Oregon University, where he's from, came up with that for him. He just paid the guy $35 for that mm -hmm. brand mm -hmm. that's made millions for Nike. Later, he ended up reimbursing the guy much more significantly, mm -hmm. but he didn't like it at first. He, he didn't get it. Now he gets it completely. That's one of the most recognizable brands in the world, mm -hmm. and it's a simple swoosh. Indiana Wesleyan students came up with this after staying home, staying here all summer. These mm -hmm. students, 20 students, chose not to go home. They were going to learn on the go at Indiana Wesleyan's as a summer course, and they stayed here really into the fall working on this brand. And what they came up with is a brand that I hope any mayor could accept. I didn't do it. I had university students and their faculty leaders, mm -hmm. Wendy Puffer and Herb Vincent Peterson. Mm -hmm. They were the ones that did this. The city was just there to facilitate. We helped get the uh, county to let us use Salem Bank with the, for the university. That's why there was all those sticky notes in the bank if you went by. That was um, the, the university students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you notice yep. those sticky notes, that the was university location. students and professors working on this project for uh -huh. a new brand. It, I hope it stays. I yeah. hope whether I'm mayor or not, this becomes the mark, the so brand of Mary. Mark, when you say that it's not just a logo, is it? It is a logo, but, but it's there is then a a way that we want people to perceive our city, and it's a change of perspective, if mm -hmm. you will. Much more contemporary, mm -hmm. um, moving forward type. And are you embracing the city of champions? To some extent, that's the slogan part of the brand. Mm -hmm. We're doing that by recognizing champions in our community. It's mm -hmm. much more than just the word city of champions. We're recognizing people who are championing causes or have done unbelievable things mm -hmm. to promote our community. Mm -hmm. So the city of champions slogan, am I going to put it all over everything when you see that city, their city owned? No, because the next person may decide that's not the slogan for them. I hear, you know, one thing I've learned in 14 months is the mayors of Marion, that have left almost never leave with the shine. By the time they're no longer mayor, they've, they've lost the uh, sparkle they once had from the people who voted for them. They, they no longer have that sparkle. That, uh, I talked to several former mayors. They said the mayors of Marion aren't elected. The previous mayors are unelected. There's some truth to that. It's not just in Marion. So by the time the new mayor comes in, people are looking for something fresh and different. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping the city slogan, Mm -hmm. City, of City of Champions will be more remembered because we recognize people than it will be because I put it all over mm -hmm. different uh, areas of our city that are city owned. Mm -hmm. well, there'll be a few places maybe that we do it strategically, but we'll put the brand there that says City of Marion. I really appreciate the positive perspective. I really appreciate the fact that you are recognizing the good in this community and also that you know you incorporated not only the students from Marion Community Schools, but then also from Indiana Wesleyan. And knowing that those, those students are the future of Marion, uh, I really like that they were included in that process and that that is something that will hopefully last and, and, and leave a mark that will be ongoing in years to come. I think we've seen a little bit of that already. Some of these students have become very invested, mm -hmm. and they developed some relationships because they didn't just sit in that bank. They went out to the community, all segments of our community, of and did a lot of research, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. meant they talked to a lot of people from all walks mm -hmm. of life. Yeah. And what they did, some of them started falling in love with our city more than they ever anticipated they would. And some of them have decided they're going to make this their home. You Will know, it be I, for a lifetime? We don't know, but we know they didn't, they're not leaving in a hurry. They're saying, hey, there's something about this place that's special. I might want to stay here. And, and speaking of two of those special things, I was actually privileged to be at that press conference. And uh, as the students had gone out and, and did the research to get to know uh, Marion and its residents, uh, to be able to do a better job with this rebranding effort, one of, well, two of the things that they discovered was that the generosity of people here in Marion. We are one of the most giving, financially giving cities within the state of Indiana, and secondarily, volunteerism. 
that was another huge uh, resource here within Marion that you just don't find. People here, you, you all give of yourselves so generously. And that is something that is noteworthy that is not found in a lot of other communities. And I was really impressed to discover that. Well, you just touched on something that's important. They not only give their money, those who don't have money to give are giving their time. Yes. And those who have both to give in Marion, mm -hmm. they tend to give both. They mm -hmm. don't just give one or the other. Mm -hmm. I've always said sometimes it's easier to give money than time. Mm -hmm. uh, for others, it's easier to give time because they don't have the extra money. Right. But we have the best of both worlds, and that this study proved it. Our people... Our people are very generous with both their time and their talents. So true. And, you know, uh, let me then switch over here real quick to another question that we had. And this came in uh, from a, a gal named Linda. Linda, thanks so much for taking the time to text into the show. And uh, she said, I would like to volunteer to help Marion community. Would you have someone contact me to let me know what I can do? So do you have someone that is actively contacting people or is there a phone number that people can call or a person that they can reach out to if they should want to get involved within our community and help? Well, first of all, Linda, appreciate your willingness to help and be a volunteer. You know, volunteers are, are great for cities and nonprofits. The city of Marion needs volunteers. Uh, that comes without pay and without benefits. So those are extra because they save the city money. But Volunteers are going to be the heartbeat of our city. I really believe that, whether it's neighborhoods or whatever. If you want to help the city of Marion, Linda, call Nikki Owen. She's my office assistant. She's the voice of Marion now when you call City Hall. The number to reach her at is 662-9931. And Nikki can take information from you and start looking at opportunities to plug you in and let you help our city become stronger. So I appreciate your willingness, Linda. Give Nikki a call, 662-9931. You know what, we need to pause for a really quick break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about some other things and some some questions that we have here have to do with road conditions and gas prices and gas taxes. So we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more WSOT TV City Talk in just a moment. You're watching WSOT TV. North Central Indiana and Western Ohio's source for family programming you can trust. In many ways, my job at Boeing feels like a continuation of my role in the Air Force Reserve. You're fueling aircraft at 20,000 feet. They say the dream job is something you do for free. I have that dream job. Start your adventure with the Air Force Reserve. Welcome back to WSOT TV City Talk. We're so glad that you're joining us today. We want to remind you that this is your show, and so we talk about everything that you send into the show. Questions, comments, concerns, we deal with all of them here on City Talk. If you have questions or comments that you'd like to send into the show, you can call us on the message line. It's a local number, 765-536-WSOT. You can text that number as well anytime, 24-7. You can also go to the show website, which is cdmarion.com, and submit your questions online. If you have pictures or things that you'd like to send in, you can do that as well. You also can watch archived episodes of the show. So if you heard us say something and, and you didn't quite catch all of it, you want to go back and catch it again, go to ctmarion.com. All right, so as we were about to uh, start talking about several things pertaining to the city of Marion, everything from a gas tax to, uh, well, let's jump into the next question. This came in on the message line. Uh, why can't the college students repaint the giant on the water tower? It's been there for as long as I can remember, and I'm 50 years old. I don't have a name. I'm sorry, I don't have a name. But what, are we doing anything with the water tower? Well, the utilities department. Chuck Meeker, Director of Marion uh -huh. Utilities, and I have met several times. We are going to sandblast the water tower. It'll, this time it will be sandblasted so there's nothing left on the outside. You may be surprised to know that they'll start on the inside, too. There will be nothing left of paint on the inside, and then they'll repaint the whole thing. Um, that's going to take some time. That's a big project, and it's not cheap. I think it's $800,000 or $850,000 for the total project. We wouldn't want students up there. We need to have trained professionals. This is working at significant heights, and yeah, there's a I wouldn't element. want to be up there painting, I will tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's that danger element. We need trained professionals to do that. And when you talk about what's going on the water tower, mm -hmm. we'll have our new brand 
the that M, we the new RAM that we just mm -hmm. developed with mm -hmm. Indiana Wesleyan students and right. faculty developed for the City of Marion mm -hmm. and City of Marion on the water tower. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be painted white, the tower, and then the new city colors, the kind of green and blues, you'll start to see that brand out there more. Uh, you'll see that up there. And I will tell you that it's likely you'll see a Marion Giant up there like we've had. It won't be the state championship years because we've just added an eighth state championship, and that would take up a lot of the tower, mm -hmm. all those different state championships. And then that's not even including the baseball state championships and the different state championships. But uh, uh, an individual in our community has decided to make sure that uh, they'd like to see the giant logo up there. I will tell you that talking to Chuck Binkert at the Utilities, that logo cost about $10,000 to paint. Really? The, those aren't cheap. When you say how much, that's a huge logo. Yeah. And the detail work involved, mm -hmm. there's a charge for that kind of painting. It's not just throwing paint on something big. It's more, much more detailed oriented. Yeah. He said that you're looking at about a $10,000 charge. Well, the city of Marion doesn't really want to spend that kind of money, but I think we might have a certain individual or individuals who want to see that up there. And you may you may still get to see that Marion Giant up there. Nobody wants, thinks more of the Marion Giants than myself. I played on the 75, 76 teams there, and you know, we'll always be a giant, but I also have to be a good steward with our taxpayers' dollars. This might take that stress out of me, and we may have other people stepping up to make sure that that tradition continues. And I may extend that offer onto another uh, entity in our community that I think is such a significant part of our community and a part of our future and see if they want to incur the cost and have a logo on their behalf as well. And mm -hmm. we'll surprise you with that later. Any estimated uh, start time for that project? No, the trucks are underneath there now. They're getting ready to start based on weather, but there's there's a, that's going to be starting very soon. The first thing you'll notice as they start will be the activity around and on the tower, the water tower. But then at one point you're going to see it looking very uh, drab when all the paint's removed. Right. And then you'll start to see it come to life again with brand new white paint. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, of course, you'll see the details, what else goes on. Uh, I'd like to see Marion Utilities recognized on there, too, with their own signage, you know, somewhere on the... Mm -hmm. We even talked about this came up. I don't think I told you this, Angela, on the break, but the possibility of maybe an, uh, what is it called, LED sign up there that we could uh, run. The lighted sign. Yeah, the lighted mm -hmm. signs that we could post up somewhere on the water tower and maybe what even raise idea. revenue. That's a that great way, idea. so that's that's something we're just starting to think about. Chuck Binker Talk brought that up. Talk about a big up. billboard, right? It'd be a big billboard, mm -hmm. great visibility. Mm -hmm. Now we have to see: is it practical? Is it something that could be done with, without a lot of stress on the tower? What's it going to look like, and how do we utilize it? That that's just something Chuck Binker thought of when we and I were meeting in my office. We're going to look into that. I appreciate the out of the box thinking. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's maybe well, a me, revenue source. Let me jump on to a few more questions, just keeping sure. an eye on time. Um, it's kind of a two, I've got two questions here. I think they go kind of hand in hand. Uh, the first one has to do with potholes, and this came in on the message line, which is the 536WSOT. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, and it's, it, it reads, um, being, uh, well, it says here, being broke is one thing and leaving potholes is another issue. Let's get our potholes patched so that we don't look like a second-class city. That is one question. And then there is another one that came in that I think kind of goes along with that, and it is, is Indiana going to raise gas prices? So I understand those two elements. There's uh, there's a common element there at those two questions, and I'm going to let you address them both. Well, let me answer the second part first. Uh, the gas increases the tax, tax on gas purchases. So what you found is there's uh, fewer... Uh, gas, there's less gas needed nowadays. Everybody's car goes farther than it ever used to. There's electric cars now, so the, the consumption of fuel is not as great as it used to be. So those taxes have dwindled. It's been a while since they've charged more mm -hmm. on the gas tax. This is a conversation going on with your state legislatures. I heard Kevin Mahan, our local state rep out of Blackford County, talking about this issue just recently. And he thinks it's very likely to come that they're going to increase the gas tax. That's a way to generate money that should be used just for your streets. That's money that was meant for that, and it mm -hmm. will be used for that. Your state lottery funds and other things that people thought were really for streets, they were for multiple uses. The gas tax will be to take care of the infrastructure. So uh, where are we at? Do you know where we're at as far as uh, I know that, that that legislation was something that was passed partially? Uh, and we would look at seeing an increase in not only gas tax, but also with our vehicle registration mm -hmm. fees. 
Uh, and I know that that is something that was being pushed then through to see, is that actually going to take effect or is, do you know where we're at with that? I can't predict. I think it's, it hasn't been finalized. I think it's likely to happen. That'd be my guess that mm -hmm. this will all get approved. It's mm -hmm. one way to generate this uh, necessary revenue for infrastructure improvement. Right. And mm -hmm. So if the state does end up passing yeah. that, then the city will see and, funds and, and that'll help you. And if you're using a vehicle, yeah, that helps the city, local communities too, not just state and mm -hmm. federal, but it helps the local because it's, mm -hmm. This is money geared strictly for infrastructure. And that then would maybe take us to the next question on pothole repair. Yes. That's a battle this time of year, it especially. Is. We mm -hmm. can't keep the potholes covered this time of year. You get that hot cold, the freeze and the thaws. And mm -hmm. what we just put in a day or two ago starts to bubble up and here it's no longer a, a patched pothole. It's just a pothole again. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to do though is again, try to pave as much of the streets as we can with the amount of money we have to spend this year. We have a plan already in place for Washington Street from, you saw it paved from Bradford all the way north to Highland Avenue. We'll continue that from Bradford all the way downtown to the bridge. Lincoln Boulevard's on our agenda to get paved from 38th Street there in front of the VA all the way to the bridge essentially. We're going to, there on Bar Brothers, down basically 26th Street, 30th Street area. Paint, pave that. We're looking at the major roads, especially your north south roads. Some of our east-west roads are state highways, but we're going to get that addressed. And rather than having to put replace potholes there, what we're doing is actually paving large stretches of main thoroughfares. And I oh, think that's, nice. that's better use of the taxpayers' yeah. dollars. Another quick road question for you. This one came in. It was a text. Uh, can the median at the bypass and Walmart be used as a turn lane? A lot of traffic gets held up there, and that's from Chris. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to send in that question. And, Angela, we talked about this on the break. That's a state highway. Our bypass is. is a state highway. Mm -hmm. uh, state makes all those determinations. If you, the right-hand lane is what they're talking about. As, as you're heading south on the bypass, that right-hand lane is not really meant to be a turn lane, although many people use it as such. Actually, they're at fault if there's an accident. Somebody hits them on the side. It's actually the person in that turn lane, which is not a turn lane, it's a median. They're the one at fault then if there's an accident. Uh, so that's something the state would have to deal with. I will tell you this, it's probably been a great boon to our uh, auto repair shops here in Marion because you've seen a number of fender benders there turning into Walmart, and sometimes so it's true. because somebody's using that median as a turn lane. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You know, we need to pause for another quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about fire station number one and a few other things all related to the city of Marion. So keep your questions and your comments coming in, 536-WSOT, and we'll be right back with some more WSOT City Talk in just a moment. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You're watching WSOT TV. Welcome back to WSOT TV City Talk. We've enjoyed getting to answer the questions and comments that you've sent into the show today. And if you haven't had a chance to send in your thoughts to the mayor, you can do that by calling the message line 536-WSOT. You can also text that number or go to the show website, ctmarion.com. Now, as we were about to go to this last break, I mentioned fire station number one. And we did have a viewer call in with a question wanting to know, now that fire station number one is closed, are there plans for the property to be sold, auctioned off, or is the building going to be demolished? We know it was in a, a state of disrepair, which is what led to the uh, closing of that station initially. Well, right now we don't have plans to demolish it or anything. Uh, we just don't want anybody in it because of the liability issues mm -hmm. with the condition of the building. Mm -hmm. So we're too early right now to say there's all those options are on the table. Um, option three or four, whichever option we were up to there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that somebody intervenes and says, well, hey, we, we, uh, we think it's vitally important to have a downtown fire station, and here's what we will do to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. So that's another possibility that could happen if the right motivation hits someone and they feel compelled to figure out a way to put one down there. It's just too early to tell right now. Oh, that was a tough decision to make. It mm -hmm. wasn't a popular decision, but yeah, it was sure. the right decision because of the condition of the building. I'm sure. Uh, let me interject a couple of quick questions. We actually did not have these these particular questions called in. I actually was asked 
uh, by those folks that are out and about in the community. I love when you come up and talk to me and share your questions or your, your concerns with me, and I always try to bring them back to the show. Do you get that, show. too, when you're out? People? I do. I love it. It's great. So uh, a lot of uh, questions are coming in about what is happening out on the south end of town, out near Meyer, Coles, the TJ Maxx area. There's a new building going in and new construction. looks beautiful. And then also, what's happening uh, with the property that is located on the north end of town, uh, off of the bypass? It used to be the former home of Grant County Manufactured Housing. It's the piece of land next to Taco Bell, if you will. Well, the location out south in front of Meyer and Coles that you're referring to, that is a new mattress store. It's a mattress firm, if I recall right, mm -hmm. but it's a mattress firm going in there soon. It's come a long way. I went by there last evening, and it's really looks like it they're looks close great. to opening the outside mm -hmm. looks almost finished i know they're working on the inside mm -hmm. and out north where grant county manufactured out homes used to be the moses family that will be a holiday Inn express uh there were some questions why there why not out south that's not our job holiday inn is a huge business worldwide business they have paid pay, highly paid site developers that choose locations mm -hmm. they thought that was the right location the city council approved it and they'll be changing the look of that area of the bypass here very soon. You'll see a lot of activity there with this weather changing. And then by the end of the year, you'll probably see a brand new hotel open there next to Taco Bell North. Oh, good. Thank you for the insight on both of those. Exciting to watch that happen. I have another question for you. And uh, this one came in uh, as a text. And it is, uh, why is the homeless shelter not taking donations anymore? Um, they were concerned about the negative press they received from the, the television news stories that were done. I think that this question is referencing the Grant County Rescue Mission when they say homeless shelter. I, I'm assuming that is what they I mean. would assume that too, Angela. Mm -hmm. And while that was uh, alarming, what we saw on the news, Channel 13 out of Indianapolis, it has really turned around the rescue mission. I've been in there and the place before and after, if you saw the before and after photos, it's amazing the change. And my guess is if folks want to give to the Grant County Rec Rescue Mission, Rick's their new director there, uh, get a hold of Rick. I'm sure he'd be glad to take your money. And they're, they're making improvements. They're trying to uh, help as many of these people who have need, have need of their services. And I'm sure they could use the resources that people in our community could support them with to make that a reality. So. I don't think they're not taking donations anymore. Maybe a little more difficult there for a while to get donations. But I think once people get in there and take a look, mm -hmm. uh, they'll see this is a place that's headed in the right direction, and there's a great need for that here in our community. So please uh, dig in your pockets and support the rescue mission. Okay, I have about a minute and a half left, and I want to bring up another topic, and it's kind of going to circle back to what we talked about in question number one, and that was uh, the concern that was expressed about the heroin addiction, the meth use, et cetera. You know, we had Chief Haley on the show last time, and one of the things that she uh, shared was her concern over the heroin addictions that were taking place and the rise that we are seeing. Uh, and I would like for you to have a, a chance just to share your heart with uh, regards to that entire issue. Right. Well, that's an, an area that's hit me personally, to be quite honest with folks. I mentioned that at the State of the City address recently, and it's an area that we have to address. It's a nationwide, if not worldwide, scourge on, scourge on our communities. We have to find ways to help those addicts when they're ready for help. It's not an easy addiction to overcome. And many of these people start on pain pills and then found that source dried up and turned to heroin as a cheap, easy to get alternative. We have to find ways to shut down the suppliers and we have to find ways to bring hope and a change of values and perspectives to those addicts. And again, this is personal to me now, folks, and we're working towards that. I'll be meeting with Family Service Society's leader, the director, Lisa Dominici, tomorrow, in fact, and we'll start working on that. We're working with an organization with places in Indianapolis and Winchester that we think might be able to help make a difference here in our community and help battle this uh, this problem with heroin addiction and meth addiction. Okay. Well, I hope that you'll keep us posted and let us know what the progress is on that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all out of time. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch us here on City Talk, whether you're watching us on TV or on ctmarion.com. We want you to know that you're important to us and we want to hear from you, so please keep those questions coming in. 536-WSOT. Uh, call or text anytime. We're all out of time so keep on watching WSOT TV so for some more quality family programming that you can trust right here.